Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church. Special welcome to all of our visitors here today, especially those from the Vermeer clan who are here to remember Carrie today. So glad to have you here. Seems like you're all over somehow, but welcome. Um, we are here because of what God has done for us. That in Jesus Christ, he came to earth to express his love for us, even though we'd run away. He gave his life for us on the cross, and Jesus rose from the dead to offer us eternal life. And he's given us the mission of sharing that good news with the world. The way we do that is by living day by day in relationship with God, by growing more like Jesus through the habits of our lives, and by going out in this world to share his love, to share his good news. Around Westminster, we call that know Christ, grow in Christ, and go in Christ. Welcome. Uh, if you happen to be new with us this morning, Vermeer's included, we do have at the, each exit, we'll have someone with a basket of welcome bags. If you're new, claim your welcome bag. And also, I invite you to find the connection card that's in the pew in front of you, and let us know you're here. Um, just put your name on it, as much information as you're welcome to give us. I love connecting with new people. A um, couple things going on in the life of the church. You may have noticed a couple, little bit different today. We put some extra chairs in here because it was a little extra full last week, so maybe that'll help out a little bit. Um, the worship hall remodel has begun. Um, thanks to everybody who has donated toward that. It is happening right now, which means that Aaron's class, it, uh, many of us are going to the class Living Love that Aaron Crowley has been teaching. It's not going to be in here at 1030, but in the gathering place where we normally have the free coffee. Um, and so that'll be, you know, next service at 1030. Uh, we'll be right in there. Um, and the contemporary worship service will be in here at 1030. So if you want to stay around and chat in here afterwards, you might just get another worship service in. Um, let's see. Also, one other thing. We have a birthday coming up. A lot of people have birthdays, but there's a particular one. Alan Axtell is turning 100 soon up. Alan, oh, 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 no, 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 Y'all just don't listen. It, <laughs> his family had an idea that we are plugging into. He's not happening yet. It's going to happen in a little while. We can celebrate that then. You got to get there, Alan, all right? So, uh, but uh, but there, he has been such a volunteer in the Smart Reader Program and for CASA, and so they wanted to collect children's books for that. If you have any children's books to donate or want to donate, we have a, a box for that in the, in the hallway. And so that's what children's books donations are going to this month, just before July 1st. All right? None of this congratulations stuff till it actually happens now. All right? Um, I think that's enough. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, I thank you for walking with us every step of life's journey from the time that we are infants and you give us life, even in conception itself, through the time of our childhood when you raise us, the times that you touch us and meet us for ourselves, for the mission you give us through life and even as we exit this life, we know we are walking into eternal, in eternity with you. God, walk with us in this hour. And may we walk with you. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends and family, please rise and join me as we call the worship. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Name his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Please join me as we sing.
seated. It's just so cool to see everybody, you know, at one time in this place. It's just wonderful to see the family together. What a gift. Friends, as we acknowledge that who God is in a hymn like that, we acknowledge that we are not God and that so often we fall short of the calling that God has for us. And so on this day, we confess our sins. We confess together as a people, as a family, acknowledging the truth of who we are and coming to God for his forgiveness through Jesus Christ. So would you pray with me our prayer of confession this morning? The words are found printed in your order of worship. Gracious God, shine your light into every corner of our lives. May your love transform our relationships. May your truth enlighten our thoughts. May your justice direct our actions. May faith invade our fears. And may humility conquer our pride. God, we need your light because we shroud our sin in darkness and hide our brokenness behind a smiling mask. Shine your light within us and heal us that we may reflect your light to the world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear this assurance of forgiveness from Acts chapter 26. We open our eyes and turn them from darkness to light. So that we may forgiveness of sins. And a place among those who are sanctified by faith. Thanks be to God. Let us remain seated as we sing hymn number 668. We'll sing all the verses.
because I forgot to introduce you again earlier. I know you've been in worship with us before, but let me just, Marcus Brooks is a ministry candidate, also a chaplain at the VA right now, a chaplain fellow at the VA right now, uh, is, is heading into ordination, going to be preaching for us in a couple of weeks, but glad to have you with us, helping with worship today. Thank you, Marcus. So... But where has been with us in the contemporary service, I realize many of you guys don't know him and his delightful wife, Lana. So, hey, Lana. We are continuing this message series, Why Am I Here? As we said, we were created to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. That's what we were made for. That's what we'll be doing for eternity. But since history got off track with human sin, we have another purpose We are here to witness to the truth, to point people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are here to show Jesus to the world, to to grow more like Jesus so people can see what Jesus is like. And today I'm going to say, we are here to save the world. Friends, that is not being overdramatic. I mean that quite seriously. Jesus Christ called his disciples, called the church together in order to be the community of people who demonstrate the kingdom of God to the world. God's plan for salvation has always been to gather a community of people together who live as the kingdom of God. Jesus knew this. When Jesus first came uh, preaching, when he first came proclaiming the good news, in Luke chapter 4, he went to his home church. and was guess, kind of a guest preacher at his home church. And he turned to Isaiah chapter 61. I'm going to read it in just a minute. And, and, well, that's not Isaiah 61. He turned to Isaiah 61, which somebody ought to put as a, my bookmark in the right place. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, he, but so, and, and it, it's not a prophecy of the Messiah per se. It's really a statement of Israel and who they're called to be. It is a prophecy of the kingdom of God, what life is like when God is king, and we are the ones who show the world what this is like. So here, what what Jesus preached on was this, Isaiah 61, starting in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and tend your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. Friends, it is Isaiah who tells us that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, friends, I got to tell you a little bit about myself. I love superhero movies. All right? The Avengers, Superman, Batman, uh, Spider-Man, any man. I'm there, man. I, I, I love it. When I was a kid, I imagined being a superhero. Is there anybody else here who pretended to be a superhero when you were a kid? Oh, thank you. I'm so glad someone was willing to admit it. All right. I had a cape that I would put on. I was always looking for some mutant spider to bite me. All right. I was looking for that great lab experiment that was going to confer upon me superpowers or some genetic mutation, right? I was looking for it. It never happened. And yet, at least as far as I'm going to tell you guys, right? Uh, I wanted to be a superhero. You know, friends, that really is our calling. Not to have genetic spider bites or whatever, but but to be heroes in this world. We're called to be heroes like Jesus. Jesus is the archetypal superhero, right? He swept in from heaven. 
there you go, right? He swept in from heaven with miraculous superpowers, right? He came in and did a cosmic battle against the powers of darkness, you know? And just when it looked like all was lost, there was the great plot twist when he rose from the dead victorious. And the reason that plot sounds so familiar is because all of the superhero movies of our culture right now borrow their plot line from the true story of Jesus. Think about that. The plot line in all of the superhero movies, and guys, I've watched a lot of them, it's the same plot. I go to the movie and I know the plot ahead of time. I was surprised by Infinity War, just for, to be fair. But it, it, um, it's the same plot. It's the same plot line that they're borrowing from the true story of Jesus. But when we look at Jesus just a little closer, Jesus is a different kind of hero than the superheroes that we see in the movies. A different kind of hero. And you see it especially at the cross. You know, in the movies, the superheroes are pretty violent. Have you noticed? The superheroes have these superpowers and they win the day with violence. Jesus is a different kind of hero. Oh, we had an epic battle with evil, all right. You know, every movie has the superhero showdown. There was a superhero showdown at the cross. But the forces of evil threw violence at him. They threw betrayal and corruption and hatred at him. And Jesus responded with love. Jesus fought back with grace. On the cross, he prayed for the forgiveness of the violent people around him. Jesus is a different kind of hero. Everything in our world thinks that violence is stronger, right? That's why people buy guns. That's why nations buy guns. That's why the superhero movies all end with victory by violence. But Jesus is a different kind of hero. It looked like he'd lost, it looked like violence was stronger until the third day when God raised him from the dead to prove that no matter what people think, God really is king. That no matter what violence things it can do, love is stronger. Friends, we need to remember this. Good and evil are not equal forces. This idea of yin and yang is not true. In fact, this image right here is wrong of Jesus and Satan arm wrestling as if they were equally strong. No, no, the battle between good and evil is not a battle between two men of equal size. It's a battle between a man and a mosquito. Evil is simply a corruption of God's good creation. Evil cannot create. God creates. And God recreates, God redeems, God restores. There is nothing that Satan can damage that God cannot restore. We learned that on Easter. If ever the problems of the world just seem so big for you, remember, God's a whole lot bigger. And the only reason evil is allowed to persist is because God knows he can restore it. Jesus is a different kind of hero. He proved it on Easter. And then, just when you thought the movie was over, just when you thought the ending credits were about to roll, just when the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 6 ask, is it over? Is this the time when you restore the kingdom? Jesus says, over? No, 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 friends. This was the prequel. No, no. The, new, the real movie is starting, and you are the heroes. You make disciples. Heroes, that's right, James. You make disciples. You will be my witnesses. You are priests to this world and ministers of our God. You know, in the Star Wars trilogy, I'm not sure that's a superhero movie, but they have lightsabers, so it's close. Um, in the Star Wars trilogy, right, you have the, the first movie where the, Luke blows up the Death Star. And there's the final movie where, again, they blow up a Death Star. But there's that Empire Strikes Back in the middle. In the middle where there's a whole lot of drama and a whole lot of need for heroes. Friends, that's where we live today. Christ has already blown up the Death Star. And yes, he's coming to return. But we live in the Empire Strikes Back. We live in the middle. And we are the heroes of this movie. That's what Jesus tells us. He's still with us. I will be with you always. The Holy Spirit empowers us and guides us, but we are the ones 
anointed to bring good news to the poor these days. We are the ones to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to proclaim the justice of our God, to comfort all who mourn. The great plot twist of history, friends, is that God's plan to save the world is to send us. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Do you know this? Do you see yourself as a hero for God? You might not wear a cape every day, but do you see yourself? The reason I'm here on earth right now is to be a hero for God. As Isaiah 61 says, a priest of God. Uh, Yes, a priest to the world, a minister of our God. See, I I think some people are acting out the wrong role in this story of life. Because in the movie, most of the people you see in superhero movies are what the movie term, the, the, the producers call extras, right? They don't even get their names in the ending credits. They're just extras. Or if they get their names in the ending credits, the role has a title like man with flower pot, right? Woman with child. And I think there are a lot of Christians who think that that's their role in human history. See, in the movies, the hero fights the villain so normal people can go back to living normal lives. Friends, we're not here to be extras. No, if your name is, God has a place for your name in the ending credits, which he calls the book of life. And it's by name. You are named in the credits, friend. You have a role. He has a purpose for you, a role for you to play in this movie we call life. Do you know this? I think a lot of Christians think of Jesus as the superhero, and I'm just the bystanders, and he saved me so I can live a normal life. That's not the way it works. It never was. All the people named in Scripture, God has a role for us to play. See, Jesus is a different kind of hero. He didn't come just to defend normal life. Normal life is the problem he came to save us from. In normal life are all the problems named in Isaiah 61. There's poverty and there's brokenheartedness. There's injustice and there's crime. There's prison. There's mourning. Normal life is what he came to save us from. God's plan to save the world is to send this superhero Jesus to train heroes. Heroes who could train other heroes. He created this superhero training school called the church. It's a community of heroes who are training to be heroes like Jesus. If you are part of this church, if you're part of this movement, if you call yourself a Christian, you're not an extra God has a role for you to play. We're here to save the world. This is deeply Presbyterian. John Calvin knew this. John Calvin said in his doctrine of election, election is when he talks about salvation, that we're called, we're saved by grace. And when he talks about election, Calvin says that we are called to sell not only for our own salvation, but for the salvation of the world. The elect are called for the salvation of the world. And, And he lived it. A lot of people think of John Calvin as this, uh, you know, Bible theologian and scholar, and he was that. But he and the church leaders of Geneva also led a big effort to get sewers for sanitation through the city of Geneva because they said it makes Geneva more like the kingdom of God, right? He's, he's working for it, people's help. John Calvin started public schooling. Did you know this? Calvin started public schools because he believed every child, rich or poor, should learn how to read so they can read the Bible. Did you know that public schooling was started on this planet so that children could read the Bible? Well, and it was also good news for the poor because education creates opportunity. So Calvin, yeah, he was a great hero of a Bible scholar and a theologian, but he was also a hero in the city of Geneva. See, this is the kind of heroes we are called to be. And friends, this world needs Presbyterian heroes. Is there an amen to that? Right? Hey, if I ask for one, I actually get one. This is great. Um, But seriously, guys, if you look through Isaiah 61, all around us are the poor. All around us are the poor who need good news. 
The word poor in Hebrew, anav, it doesn't just mean financially poor. It does mean that. The word, it comes from the word pressed, like an olive being squeezed to get its oil out, like grapes being squeezed to get the juice out. Boy, what, a, what an image of poverty that is. And there are people who are pressed at every end of the financial spectrum, and they need good news. Not just good news about money. They need good news that there's a God who created them, a God who loves them, a God who wants to transform them and has a purpose for their lives. So many people live without purpose. Our purpose is to be heroes to this world. Our world needs heroes. Our world has so many brokenhearted. Do you know, in the last census, Medford, Oregon, of all the cities in the United States, Medford, Oregon was ranked fourth in the number of divorces. Fourth in the country, guys. We have one and a half times the divorce rate of the national average. We need some marriage heroes. Divorce is contagious because people see friends getting divorces and they start thinking about it themselves and because people don't have models, friends and family around them of a healthy marriage. We need some marriage heroes. Uh, heroes who can step up, not say I'm perfect, but to show the world what it's like to love when it's hard, to live in grace and forgiveness and faithfulness to the covenant we have made because we're the kind of people who do that. Get cheap promo, in, in next, next month in July 19, 20, we're gonna have a 20 and 21, thank you. We're gonna do, a, a, I think Lori's Lee, a marriage enrichment weekend for people... Any, wherever your marriage is, just to enrich our marriages because we need marriage heroes, people who can bind up the brokenhearted. Children need heroes. Youth need heroes. Right, just, just last uh, week, we gave out so many Bibles to the kids who were advancing, you know, advancing in the grades. We gave out Bibles or Bible storybooks to the little ones. Boy, I am so thankful for every parent who reads a Bible story each night to their kids. You know, if you're not doing that, if you have a kid, you know, do it. I'll give you the Bible. Because kids need to be raised to know the stories of our faith. I've heard of one grandmother who did not do that with her children raising up. And when her son had kids of his own, she realized her son doesn't have a foundation. Her son wasn't taking the kids to church, wasn't reading the Bible to, to, to his own kids. And she loved those grandkids. They lived across the country. And so what she did is she said, made a deal. I tell you what, I will call them every night at 10 minutes to eight and read them a three minute Bible story, ask how their day was and pray with them. That grandmother knew that kids need a hero, someone to show the gospel to them. And every night she would call these kids. Do you love your grandkids that much? I bet most of us do. We need heroes in our world. I'm thankful for all the heroes who are helping to lead Sunday school who are helping on Wednesday nights with the youth group and with kids' ministries, who are helping out at the, it's not Vacation Bible School, it's the Five Day Club, we're changing the name, um, for all the heroes who are helping with the mission trip coming up. I, I'm thankful for all the Washington Elementary people who are reading in those, uh, to those kids. Kids need heroes in their lives. We need more of them. I gotta say, as many people as we have in this room and we talk about needing more chairs in this room, I'm embarrassed that we don't have enough adults helping out with Sunday school that Amy's having to combine classes because we don't have enough adults to, to love on these kids. That's embarrassing. We need heroes to step up into children's lives. And friends, adults need heroes too, don't they? In our valley, there's so many people who are not following Jesus Christ. So many people who are just living as extras for whatever they want to live for, not a part of the gospel story. So many of them in our valley are caught up in drugs and the crime that comes with it. We have a serious drug issue here in this valley. It's tragic. And I'm so thankful for the heroes in law enforcement who are trying to deal with it. I'm so thankful for heroes at Foundations for Recovery and the Gospel Mission and other great ministries that are trying to deal with it from that end. Those are heroes too. You know, we have a great team of, of people who help out at the Gospel Mission here. It's been a growing thing this year. It's exciting to see. Our world needs heroes. Even at Westminster, we're talking about starting a recovery ministry, a ministry for people in all kinds of recovery, maybe starting this fall. We need some heroes to help lead that too because people need the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ to replace the scripts in their minds, 
to replace the stories they have told themselves about who they are. This world needs heroes. I hope you hear the kind of hero I'm talking about. You don't need a mutant spider bite to be a hero like this. You don't have to be born on the planet Krypton. You don't have to wear spandex and a cape. You know, it might be kind of neat to see all of our, all of our team at the Gospel Mission wearing spandex. It, no, not a good idea, not a good idea. Uh, heroes are the people who are following Jesus into the world, who are actively bringing good news to those who are pressed, who are binding up the brokenhearted, who are reaching out to those captured by the addictions and then their own sin, reaching out to care for those who mourn, reaching out for justice. Heroes sit in living rooms and hospital rooms. Heroes sit on counselor's couches and prayer couches. Heroes go to business meetings and government meetings. Heroes investigate crime scenes and invigorate the art scene. You hear the kind of heroes I'm talking about. These people are known as priests to the world and ministers of our God. That's Jesus' kind of hero. Are you a hero? Do the people around you know that you are called to be a hero? If the people around you, if they see you, can they say, oh, this is his role in the credits, her role in the credits? Do they know what kind of hero you are? Because the church is supposed to be a community of heroes. The church is called to be a training ground for heroes. How do we train heroes? I mean, what makes a hero? What's the difference between someone who's just living as an extra and living as a hero of the faith? You look at someone who's a great hero of the faith. Let's take Mother Teresa. I think she's a person who's pretty much known the world around as a hero of Christian faith. What makes her different? Well, if you look at her biography, you realize that she made a few commitments in life, and they were not extraordinary commitments. They were basic Christian commitments. First, if you read her biography, she committed her life to Jesus Christ at an early age. She said yes to Jesus. Jesus, you have given your life for me. I will give my life to you. That's the basic Christian commitment. The basic Christian commitment is not, oh, yes, I'd like a free ticket to heaven, please. The basic Christian commitment is, yes, Jesus, you gave your life to me. I will give my life to you. Um, that's what baptism is about right here. Our old life dies and a new life in Christ rises. Second, Mother Teresa committed to growing like Jesus. She had a, a daily prayer regimen that she would pray a couple times every day. She had a daily time in scripture each day. She had regular worship with the Lord's Supper, which is deeply meaningful to her. If you read her letters, you find out there are times in her life that felt spiritually dry. There are years of her life that felt spiritually dry. There were times when she wasn't sure if she was doing the right thing, if she was really following God and doing the ministry that she was doing was hard. She was walking with dying people, trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and not all of them accepted before they died. It was hard work. And what sustained her through that work was her daily prayer, her daily scripture, her regular worship, her time with God. Do you have a regular time with God? Because if we're going to be heroes like Jesus, we need to become like Jesus. One of the great tragedies of superhero movies is that when you look at the character of the heroes and the character of the villains, it's a little hard to tell them apart. Not Superman, not Captain America, but a lot of those heroes in the comic books and those movies don't look all that different in their depth of their character from the villains. They use the same kind of violence. And the tragedy in our world is some people think of themselves as heroes even though they live as villains. The difference between a hero and a villain is the character of Jesus within us. If we are growing in the character of Jesus, we are growing more into heroes. If we are not growing in the character of Jesus, are we growing more like villains? 
The great villains of history thought they were heroes. Hitler thought he was a hero. Stalin thought he was a hero. Planned Parenthood today in our culture thinks that they are heroes. All of these have great big plans for making the world a better place. It just involves killing millions of people. The difference between the heroes and the villains is the character of Christ within us. Are you actively growing in the character of Jesus Christ? Do you have some time each day to spend with God, to study his word, to lift yourself in prayer? Are you growing more like a hero? What makes a Mother Teresa a Mother Teresa? She said yes to Jesus. She said yes to growing more like Jesus. And she said yes to living like Jesus. She perceived, what is God's call on my life? In her case, God's call was to become a nun. I am thankful that is not my calling. But God has a calling on my life and God has a calling on your life. Right? In the, in, in the ending credits there, there's a different role to play for each person's name. What's your role on this earth? That was her role. She went to first Ireland and then went to India. And in India, she had a real heart to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted. And the people around her said no. The, monast the nuns in her monastery stayed in the monastery, if you know the story. She said, no, we need to be reaching good news to the poor. I want to go outside the monastery and reach these people. And her superior said, dear, you are a young woman in a foreign land. That's not safe. That's not smart. Stay inside the walls. Are there any voices in your head that when you think of reaching out to the world around, think, that's not safe. That's not smart. Stay inside the walls. Are there any voices in your head that say, I'm really here to stay safe. I'm here to stay comfortable. The purpose of my life is to defend myself, stay inside the walls. Is that voice in your head too? The difference between Mother Teresa and all those other nuns in her monastery whose names we do not remember is that she said, no, I follow Jesus. I'm here to bring good news to the poor. I'm here to bind up the brokenhearted and I'm going outside the walls. And so she did. Mother Teresa is known as a Christian hero, not because of all the lives she touched, but because she gave her life fully to God. She's known as a Christian hero, not because she's a great leader, but because she's a great follower of Jesus Christ. Are you a hero like that? We're all called to be heroes to the world around us. That's why we're doing this, this church plant in Ashland. You know, this is mission in a bigger way than Westminster has ever done before. We've done a whole lot of things that we support. We've done a whole lot of volunteering. This is actually a mission where people are choosing to become to incarnate, to live into the gospel and live it out in a special place. That's a remarkably big step for us, guys. We need to recognize that. And I know some people are nervous about it because it feels so different. Yeah, it's different. Some people are like, boy, I, that seems really risky. It is risky. Some people say, I don't know if it's going to succeed. I don't know if it's going to succeed or not. But I tell you what, failure is staying inside the walls. Failure is living as an extra instead of trying to take our part. We got to take our role and see what that is and see if God shows up and makes it happen. Success is leaning on God. Failure is leaning on me. And so the launch team is formed right now. They're training right now to be missionaries, to be heroes in Ashland. They're doing spiritual formation. They're doing personal formation. They're doing fun. And they're doing some justice work and Bible study have plans for all of those things. They're going to be heroes in Ashland. And I think Ashland needs some heroes for Jesus. And guess what? So does Medford and Grants Pass and Eagle Point and Shady Cove, wherever you may live. This world needs heroes for Jesus. One of the reasons we're supporting this church plant is so we can remember that we're called to be heroes from Jesus, for Jesus and maybe learn a little bit about how to do that. That's why Erin has her class right after this. It's closing out today. Because that's who we are. We're not here to be extras. We're here to save the world alongside Jesus Christ. 
So friends, I am going to give if in this message with a Presbyterian altar call. You know, around around the country, it has been, not around the world, but just around this country, it's been common to give an altar call uh, that sounds something like this, confess your sins and turn to Jesus for forgiveness. That's a great first step. Jesus never made that call. Let me just repeat that. Confess your sins and turn to Jesus for forgiveness is not what Jesus ever said. What Jesus said was, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. What Jesus said was, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus said, you make disciples, baptizing them, training them to do all that I've commanded you to do. You are my witnesses here and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You, you are the ministers to the, uh, priests of the world and the ministers of our God. Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you say, yes, I want to take whatever role God has for me in those ending credits because I believe my name is in those ending credits that we call the book of life. So I want to step into that role. I don't know what that looks like for you. You might become a nun in Calcutta. I don't know. More likely, become the parent God calls you to be, the grandparent God calls you to be, to be stepping out into this world and the relationships God has given you with the skills God has given you. Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you repent of any desire to be an extra? Any selfishness that's within us? Will you say that the salvation of the world is more important than my comfort and safety? Will you say yes to the full call of Jesus Christ? Yes, I am here to save the world alongside Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, in this moment, I'm going to invite you to come into our hearts. Open us to what you would say to us. Lord, in this moment of silence, uh, show us one place that you have given for us to be heroes. Maybe it's a place we're living into that right now. Maybe it's a place we're not yet. Open our eyes to where you would have us be heroes. Holy Spirit, show us what's holding us back. In this moment of silence, bring to our mind whatever fear is holding us back, whatever desire is holding us back, whatever complacency, whatever we are clinging to instead of clinging to you, show us what's holding us back. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave your life for us. We give our lives to you. Help us truly to live in relationship with you day by day. Open us to grow us more like you day by day. Open our eyes to those around us who are poor and pressed, who are brokenhearted, who are captive, who are in mourning. Open our eyes that we may be your good news, your heroes to the world. For we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. In response to God's word, we have an opportunity to give back. And friends, let me just tell you, we, we're, we're doing the offering right now. I got to tell you where we are. We're in need of some financial heroes right now. Westminster this year is substantially down in donations. My finance people tell me it's because of tax kind of things. I, I don't really get that because if the federal government gives you a discount, why would you give less to God? But it seems to me that, that it may be a heart issue. If you have concerns with the way Westminster is going, please let me know. I'm happy to talk to anybody, but I think we need to ask what's the heart issue there? 
Do we really have given our lives to God, every piece of us? Let's commit to giving God what's right, not giving God what's left. We'll now bring our morning offering. God, we offer these gifts to you. All that we have is a gift from you, including the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. How can we not help but give everything back? God, use these gifts to further the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our valley and around the world. And use us each and every day to be heroes for you. We pray this in Jesus' name and let all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let us sing together our final hymn, number 683. Both the previous hymn and this one mentions the name Macedonia. Just want to remind you of Acts chapter 16 when Paul had a vision. Paul, that early church leader who traveled around the Mediterranean, and God gave him a vision of a man of Macedonia who was standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us, it says in Acts 16. And Paul followed and went. Who and where are the places that are begging us as God's people to go as well? Let us sing all verses of 
663. Send the light. My charge for you today is to go out and be heroes for Jesus. Go out in whatever way God has called you as the person God has called you to be in the life God has created you to have. Go live it. Go live your role for your name is written in the book of life. Friends, if you have prayer need for yourself or for anyone else, we'll have a prayer minister right over here who would love to speak and pray with you. Friends, go out knowing that the love of God compels us. The grace of Christ sends us, and the communion of the Holy Spirit empowers us now and forevermore. Now, at the end of this service, those of us who are new will not know, we gather and join hands and sing this final song, We Are One in the Bond of Love. Mm -hmm. 